Hey everybody, this is Shelly here. It's a little after five o'clock California time and it is, goodness, September 17th. Can you believe how fast this month is going? We're halfway through and tonight is six weeks to success and this is week four, right? Everybody who knows what the topic is this evening? Recruiting. It's all about recruiting and what a great time to be talking about recruiting with a $29 kit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's had anybody take advantage of that? Uh, I have. One? I'm awesome. Okay, Renee, you're next. Ready? Trying. Okay. Well, I've got the recording going so that the folks on our Six Weeks to Success can, um, can uh, catch up. And um, if you're here for week four, I'm very, very proud of you. We, um, we definitely have less folks uh, than started. But, and that's a pretty normal thing, but you really should be very proud. If you're still in the program four weeks in, you've got two weeks left, um, keep it up, keep going. Renee, you just you did wonderful. I know you've been doing your coaching calls and um, last week our topic was host coaching, right everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do wanna just kind of go back and recap host coaching for a bit. Um, who implemented any of the things that you learned during the host coaching week? that you can share with us? Brenda? So I actually should say that um, I know I shared last week about how I was using um, Christina's uh, system that I had learned and I've actually, you know, um, gone through it and made it mine and, uh, and, and uh, have put that into place with my current shows. I'm really feeling uh, comfortable with it and re feeling really good about it. So, uh, keeping in touch with my hosts and seems to be working so far. Very good. Very good. I ramped up my number of shows and I'm using the host coaching for the virtual parties, the mm -hmm. pre pictures, the beginning, middle and end. And I've got a little chart that I keep track because I'm doing three hosts a week and it's working. The um, fundraiser is up to six, $1,600. It's a virtual fundraiser. It was supposed to close, but wow. somebody else is still shopping. The other one's at 350 and the other one has zero in sales. So um, average wise about what, $650, something like that. Really good for virtual, that's awesome. Good, thanks, that means a lot coming from you, Ms. Shaughnessy. That's How about awesome. you, Renee, did you find anything about your host coaching lessons last week that stuck with you? Yeah, and, and I did put a lot of them into play with my virtual party host. Donna. Yeah, but um, she doesn't follow direction very well. So we closed the party out today with a zero. Oh, okay. Okay, did she need more time or? No. Okay, how many people did she have invited? 96. Actually, went to 102. Okay. And she ended up with two orders, but didn't qualify the party. Okay. Okay, so what are your options at that point? Um, she can get outside orders, catalog orders. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I got one of the orders for her Okay, that came from, from my people. So, Customers. um, she didn't, it just didn't work out. Okay. Okay. But you know, practice and, and mm -hmm. uh, now you've got it in place for the next ones. Right. Okay. Um, all righty. Well, a for a for effort and, um, um, kind of keep, uh, keep focused on that because that host coaching is really critical. I'm going to turn it over to Miss Shaughnessy, who's going to lead us this evening. Are you all ready, my friend? I am ready, yes. Okay, take her let away. Me, okay, let me uh, get here to share my screen with everybody. Um, Shelly, because I'm, will it allow me to share the screen? I'm not seeing the option. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Um, what do I have to do? Manage the participants or make host. I just made you the host. Okay, now it's allowing me. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay. No worries. Okay, so can you all see the director bound slide? Yep. Oh, very good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, uh, Let's see, let me make it bigger. There we go. So director bound. Um, 
Welcome to week four. We are um, going to talk about building a team tonight. And um, building a team is very, very important because when you share an amazing business opportunity, there are people out there who need us. So we will talk um, during this session about informing and inviting people to join our business. Um, and this month, as Shelly kind of mentioned, this is the best month ever to invite people. So who has been doing awesome at host coaching last week? Um, what worked for you and what were your results? Anybody want to share? I know Shelly just shared about her virtual party posts. And Shelly, with those posts, are you doing just those host tip of the day or are you doing an additional post with the tip of the day? So the ones that are in the virtual party pack or I'm using those predominantly. And then what I found is that I had a couple extra little things from uh, that I used before to give them specific content to post. And I'm kind of still adding that, but they appreciate it. If I gave them something to post, they did it. Okay. Awesome. And that it made a difference. Yeah. So I need some more content for um, having them post. Anybody else have some host coaching success they want to share? I know Renee just stepped away, but she did a virtual party and um, her host went live, I think three times. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it really, really was. So, you know, at some point maybe we'll pair you with her to kind of look a little bit more detailed about what they did and what might it, cause obviously she didn't have any orders. So, um, or just one, I think. And, uh, there probably are a couple little tweaks that you could help her with. That makes the, the biggest difference when the host is um, participating and um, involved in the show. Cause it's, I tell my, I tell my virtual um, host, especially all the time, you cannot invite people to the party and then take off and hide in the bathroom um, mm. because you wouldn't do that. If you had me over to the, sh to your house for a cooking show, you wouldn't hide in the bathroom the whole time. It would be awkward. So don't make it awkward on Facebook. Right. Um, so when you pose it like that, I think they kind of understand like, oh, well, that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. um, so we had people that hosted then who has eight shows for October and eight shows for September. Anyone remember eight will make you great. September. Awesome. Shelly does. I am almost there. I had a couple cancellations. Um, and so I am rescheduling those cancellations. I had eight. Um, but it's only September 17th, right? Yeah, the 17th. So um, one of my favorite calls that I heard one time was uh, Pharrell. How do I, do I say it? For Pharrell. 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 Mm -hmm. I was on a call with her and she, um, it was, she was like, she basically said, it doesn't matter what day of the month it is. You still have more time in the month to make it. Mm -hmm. make you can make it great um so it doesn't matter that we're halfway through the month if you don't have your eight shows there's still time to get eight shows in there's still time to even do a show this week um so and sometimes it's easier to have people book when they're um they know what they're doing next week or this week versus three weeks out mm -hmm. so um how are you guys doing with tracking your leads with the notebooks Anybody got notebooks that they're tracking leads with? Booking leads and recruiting leads? I I um I I use a a, a notebook like a spiral bound notebook. Um, okay. That awesome. I, I track. I write down every day um who I'm calling uh, like you know who I've called whether it's I left a message or what have you and I try to make it twenty five um. For each day and then if I make a contact then it goes into a, another notebook of um, the contact person and then I also have one for recruiting awesome I have um, my two notebooks here this is my um, booking one and this is my recruiting one recruiting leads and so um, I love I've talked to Shelly about this I love Evernote and I've been tracking them in that so what I do is I just keep this handy so I can write it when I'm on the go and then all of my notes I put into Evernote so if I contact uh, Christine 
Um, I'll put in on Christine's note on Evernote. I got in touch with her. I sent this message. I heard back from her at this time and we booked for November. Um, so I'm still keeping detailed notes, but in the, um, in the notebook, it's just, you can see it's just very basic. So I'm not putting details. So whatever works for you, whatever system, if you want detailed notes in this, do detailed notes in this. Just get a system to track your contacts. Um, and I will tell you, in seven and a half years of business, when I track my contacts, that's when my business is the best. It just mm -hmm. is. So um, let me go back to my little screen share. Okay. Oh, there we go. So um, let's see, where's, that's not, oh, there you go, share. Okay, honey, I'm in the middle of a call. Um, so if you're, when you're tracking your leads, are you happy with your system? Um, is it paper, electronic, um, whatever system you use, just make sure that it works for you. Then remember that successful consultants do three, two, one consistently. That means making three contacts per day, two shows per week, and signing one consultant per month. So who has done that this month? Three, three contacts per day. I've done on average three contacts a day. Definitely on average. I, I go on and off about tracking it. Mm -hmm. And um, when I do, because it's so easy to have people fall through the cracks if you're not tracking it. And, but part of the thing is like, I'll be, I drove out to a show yesterday and I'm making phone calls in the car with it on speaker and boom, 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 boom. I make all those contacts, but I don't necessarily get a chance to go back and write them all down. Mm -hmm. So they're happening, but it, it doesn't necessarily always get tracked. Um, but boy, that car driving time is, is essential contact time. It really is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any <laughs> spare time that you have. Um, it doesn't have to be, you can set a power hour at your desk and you can do, you know, for this set a timer on your phone and say for 30 minutes, I'm going to just contact people, but it could be contacting people in the car on a long um, car ride. Or when you're, for me, I have kids in school. And so when I'm sitting waiting um, in the carpool lane, waiting for them to come out, mm -hmm. I'm making contacts right then. Cause I have a spare couple minutes. Um, so just find time in your schedule to do it. It doesn't matter when it is or where it is. Um, find your time to do it. Um, be creative because uh, if I only took the opportunity to work my business when I actually physically had time to sit out at my desk, I would not have a business. I've done training calls, pushing a stroll at the pool with my kids. It just, you have to do them where you can do it. Um, so go back to the share. Um, so remember, um, the consistency is really what's going to make you great. So Shelly did was consistent last week. Anybody else? Okay, so goal this week, be consistent. Track your uh, contacts per day and get two shows in per week. That will get you one recruit per month. And a tip this month, whatever your best recruiting month has been in your business, if, it's, if the most you've recruited in a month has been one, make it your goal this month to do two, double it. If it's, or add one more. If, if the most you've recruited is three people, recruit four this month. Make it your best month ever. With that $29 special, there's just no reason not to. Um, a great tip I got on a training call yesterday was uh, one of my fellow directors is doing, in her business posts for her virtual parties, she's offering, um, she does a drawing with the questions on the business post. And if they um, ask questions about it, she puts their name in a hat and she tells them, if you answer these, you will be put into a drawing to earn a free kit. That's the prize this month because it's the $29. $29. Mm -hmm. And before, um, on months that it's not the $29, she just does a $25 rebate towards any kit of their choice. But she's one of the top recruiters in our entire organization, and she's completely virtual. And I'm sorry, this was um, uh, Ask people. Me Anything on mm -hmm. her business page? Um, not on her business page, in her shows on her, show, on her business post. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good deal. So um, there's a little recruiting tip for you. So 
what is one of the things that you learned from our homework? Um, it was to listen to the recording, make it impactful. Anybody have something that was a good takeaway from that? Anybody listen to it? <laughs> I'll be listening to it tomorrow. Okay. Um, that's one of the, the main things is just be, when you're working your business and you have your goal in mind, if it's recruiting, because you're trying to grow your business, be intentional about it. Yeah. Set out, set your time. And when you, um, one of the best tips I ever got was, um, when looking at somebody in a, uh, and I'm going to speak for virtual shows and I've done this at cooking shows too, but when you see somebody who is interacting, who is answering <laughs> questions, asking questions, um, or, and even at a cooking show, same thing, somebody who's interacting and participating and, um, you know, contributing, consider them already recruited. Like in your mind, just say, they're going to be on my team. Like they don't have a choice. I want to work with this person and just, you know, flatter them throughout the entire show. Honestly, like, you know, oh my gosh, I would love to work with somebody like you. You have, um, you know, you ask great questions. You're knowledgeable about the product. You have a bunch of products already. Why are you not doing this and making money at it? So in your mind, you kind of make that switch. Like you're going to have work with them. You've already recruited them in your mind and your host is your best option as we all know. Um, so sharing the opportunity is really, um, a simple process. It involves three steps, informing, inviting, and having an opportunity chat. And tonight we're going to um, focus on the first two to inform and invite. Um, <clears throat> So what's the difference between informing and inviting? When you inform your show guests about the opportunity, you are simply giving them some information. You'll want to give enough information to help to create interest in our business opportunity. Examples of this are when you tell your story, um, when you plant recruiting seeds at your show, um, like this came in my kit, or this item is included in the extra bonus item that you can earn this month if you start your own business. Um, I watched at conference Michelle Anderson in her um, demo cooking show demo that she did for the quick fix cook or the, the quick cooker. She mentioned the, um, the, I forget the ultimate kit eight times in her cooking show mm. demo eight times specifically that kit. So dropping those seeds and dropping those questions um, go over the questions on the survey and the door price slip at the end of your show. Or for virtual parties, if the posts about why you love being a consultant or a new cons um, consultant kit, you want to, um, I do a door price slip on my virtual shows. I have a Google form that I, it says drawing slip and they fill it out. Um, what they're interested in, would they be interested in hearing about fundraisers? Um, would they like to host a virtual party like the one they attended? Um, information about products, or would they be interested in helping their host get started with their business and being one of their first hosts? Um, and then is there anything that, what did you like about the show? And is there anything that you would change or um, that I can improve on my show? And so on, and I make that a post that I offer um, a prize for tickets into a prize. And I generally get about three to four people per show that fill that out. And a couple of them, usually two out of four of them are booking shows with it. They're clicking that box where they might have not physically told me in a personal message, they are clicking that box. So are you doing anything specific to call that out? Cause I've been posting it a couple times during the virtual parties and they're not, I'm not getting anybody were filling it out. Um, I just, I will tag people in it and I will say, remember to fill out the, um, the, the Google form because I'm going to be doing the drawing for, you know, the grand prize and this gets 10 tickets into the drawing. Do you have a, um, do you have an image, a picture that shows what you're giving tickets for that you use for your virtuals? No, nope. 
I just, it's on a post with whatever the post is. So if I don't typically do a lot of the ones where it's games of the guess the yeah. Skittles in the jar or whatever, it, that's just too much work for me to figure out. So I do a lot of like, okay, I'll post this video, w watch this quick little video on the, um, manual food processor. What would you make in your manual food processor? Comment below for five tickets. Um, that kind of thing. Um, so that the drawing slip you can actually do virtually as well with the Google form. So um, inviting is when you actually invite the guests individually to learn more. It's not inviting them to sell. It might be as simple as seeing if they want to join you for a cup of coffee or a soda um, to chat and see if Pamper Chef looks like a good fit for them, or even calling and texting and private messaging with them that information. So if you want to make sure you always don't stop at informing, and also invite each of your guests to find out more. Um, that's really important, just continually. I always offer three-way calls with my um, consultants and any prospective con um, consultants that they have that I will talk to them one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And informing, when to inform. So it can happen different parts during a cooking show. The first one is during the, what we call the group hello, where guests introduce themselves and tell how they know the host. This will be where you tell a little bit about yourself as well. And you may choose to tell your Pamper Chef story at the beginning of the show or do it at the end. You'll also wanna sprinkle those seeds about recruiting throughout your cooking shows. So if you are doing a station style show, you may want to choose to focus on a particular power tool like the rock rock um, and say something like, oh my gosh, this um, rock rock is so versatile and I love using mine in my kitchen at home. It came in the new consultant kit. So if you fall in love with this product today and you decide that you want it in your own kitchen, it's $119. But for just $40 more, you can decide to give this amazing business a try and purchase the deluxe kit instead. And you'll get that rock rock and the simple slicer we just used, which is $32 plus $300 more in products, many of which we have, um, many of which we have in the um, use today for just $159. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit. And you might want to mention some other perks of being a consultant as you do your show, like a trip you're earning, or maybe one you've earned in the past, or that you have two other Facebook parties running at the same time while you're at this party. Um, I go live in my parties. When I have mm -hmm. cooking shows, I'll go live um, when somebody, I do station style shows. And so if somebody's at, you know, doing the manual food processor or making some salad, I'll go, or salsa, not salad, I'll go live and I'll um, say, hey, ladies, say hi, we're in my virtual party right now and we're showing them how to make a uh, manual food processor. I've had people in my Facebook party join in live, watch the demo of the, con the guests at the cooking show and book a, par a cooking show because they're watching others have fun. So um, that's such a good point. You know, really, it's even, you know, having folks here the other night, we went live like three different times mm -hmm. into three different places and just showed three different things we were doing, just little tiny ones. But, and you're like, yeah, hey, we're here at recipe night or we're here in Michelle's kitchen. So, you know, you're already cooking. You're just maximizing your audience. The yep. technology is there for us. It's so simple. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, let them know that you're, uh, you want to share some more information during the, um, the confident close or the full service checkout as you wrap up the party. Um, like you go over the questions on the survey slip or the, the door prize drawing slip. Honestly, I don't use the drawing slips at my cooking shows. I just talk to them and ask them, so what did you do with, um, what did you love about the party tonight? What was it that I talked about about the business that, um, sparked an interest was it the flexibility or i rem and i i listen to my people in a cooking show so when i meet them and and talk to them i'll you know might hear oh so shelly you're a dietitian this would be perfect for you have you ever thought about this with your knowledge of um you know the diet you could really teach people on a larger scale how to make those uh, meals that are healthy for them with some of our tools like this would be perfect for you mm -hmm. so 
always listening um, when you're talking to them. You, you really want to listen more than you talk because you want to hear what they need for the, from the business. And that's, that's the key. What do they need? And you find the solution and how this will work for them. So if you give out the survey slips without talking about them, you're probably only going to get first names and mostly all no responses. However, if you talk about each item on the survey slip, if, um, when they use them, you'll actually get great leads. So when you talk about learning more about the earning opportunity, you might say something like, hey, we've talked about a little bit tonight about how amazing my job is. You probably didn't come here looking for a job, but if you thought that what I'm doing looks like fun, or if you need to make some extra money with a lot of flexibility and freedom to work when and where you want, or maybe you just love the tools and want everything, you should really think about giving this business a try. When you purchase one of our new consultant kits, you aren't signing up to sell for the next 20 years. You're just saying, hey, I'll give it a try doing a handful of shows to see if it's a good fit for me and my family. Um, and I tell people, I say, hey, just take us out for a couple of dates. You don't have to marry us. Mm -hmm. Just take us out for a couple of dates and see how, how it works. Um, and I, I tell people, when I went to my shows and was hosting shows, I tuned the lady out when she was talking about um, the business opportunity. And man, do I wish I would have signed so many years earlier because I'm getting paid to sit here and drink wine with you and cook. So um, just kind of be yourself. Uh, make it your own and let them know that it's not, you know, they're not signing away anything in blood. It's just to, to try it out. And if it's not, let them know, you know, you'll earn back the investment that you make on your kit and you have some money in your pocket and a kitchen full of some of the best tools on the market. But you just might find that Pampered Chef is a perfect fit for you and it could change your life. So how would you like to have financial freedom that you want? Not to have to lie awake, worrying about the bills, to be debt free, to have a job you can work around your family and life instead of the other way around. I invite each of you guys to think about what I do and I'll be here to help you every step of the way. Mark yes or maybe on the survey slip and I can send you home with a little bit more information or we can get together for coffee and see if it looks like a good fit for you. Um, and so when people ask questions about, um, like these, you might be thinking, oh, how nice, she's interested in me. But what they're probably thinking instead is, could this be something that might work for me? Keep the answer short, just a couple of sentences. Then say, have you ever thought about doing something like this? Um, so just watch for those red flag questions. You know, people, I always do the ticket activity at my cooking shows um, and they get tickets for asking questions. I do the same thing in my virtual parties. I do a ticket activity where they get tickets into a, um, a drawing, specific drawing just for asking questions about the business. And then I'll say, hey, Shelly, that was a great question. Um, no, I don't have to do all my shows at night. I have the flexibility to work them around my busy life. Look, um, I'm going to send you a personal message watch out for that for me. And then I send him a personal message and I say something like, Oh my gosh, Shelly, thanks so much for asking the question. That was great. Did you just do it for the tickets laugh out loud? Or would you like to um, chat a little bit more about this? And then um, I kind of go take it from there and see how it goes depending on their answer. So besides the questions that people ask, you can also tell by somebody's behaviors. Body language is one of the biggest things. Um, so people will, who arrive early and stay late might be doing so to check out what you're doing. They might talk to you as you're getting, setting up or packing up. They may offer to help you instead of saying, oh, no, thanks. I have a system. Let them help you. It will give you an opportunity to ask them if they'd like more information. Don't forget to tell your story and notice who's hanging on your every word. You'll be able to tell. And people who are very interactive during the show ask lots of questions make a lot of comments and or say they have a lot of pamper chef at their house. These are great leads too. So if someone has a lot of pamper chef, give them lots of tips or maybe they've even sold pamper chef before. Be sure to talk with them at the full service checkout in a direct way. You might say something like, Hey, did you know you sold five manual food processors today? Just because you talked about how amazing it was, five people bought it. You would be so great at what I do. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? 
And personal story, that works. That's how I became a pampered chef. I was at a um, vendor event with my sister who was in another company at the time. And I, her table was set up next to Stacy Itzel, who's my director. Mm -hmm. And Stacy was busy helping a customer. I'd hosted Pampered Chef shows, loved it. Somebody was looking at the can opener and I said something, oh my gosh, I love that. It's amazing. I've had mine for years. Um, you should definitely get that. Stacy, of course, heard it. And then after, you know, it had cleared out, she's like, oh my gosh, you totally sold that lady, that can opener. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? I was like, oh no, I've never thought about doing this. And um, well, you should host a party. Well, I hosted a party and eight years later, here I am and um, on her team. So you never know. It really does work when you talk to people like that and just be genuine. So be sure to tell your story. That's really, really important. Why did you start with the Pampered Chef? Um, why you've stayed with the Pampered Chef? There's different reasons. So um, when I'm training my new consultants, I always um, tell them your first couple things are always going to be the same, your story. But your goals and what you, your accomplishments are always going to change. So when you start Pampered Chef, you started Pampered Chef because how did you, what was your concern before joining Pampered Chef? And how did you um, address that or overcome that? And then um, what are you excited about next? So for me, I started Pampered Chef because we were getting out of debt and wanted to pay for preschool and it just wasn't in our budget. I was concerned that I wouldn't know enough people to book parties because we had just moved to the area and um, I didn't know a lot of people, but I was in a Bible study and a book club and was able to quickly, and did a vendor event and was able to quickly go outside of my circles. And um, then I go into, and it, with Pampered Chef, I've been able to X, Y, and Z. So at first it was just pay a tuition payment. Now I've been able to travel and, um, you know, do home improvements and pay private school tuition and this, that, and the other. So mm -hmm. that part of your story will always change, but the why you started and what was your concern and how did you address it will always um, be the same. So um, if you go into too much detail about things, people can't um, relate and they'll tune you out. So you might want to, you know, just keep it simple, just like a 30 second commercial. It's not a life story. It's just something really brief. Um, so let them know how you love the products and, you know, you had some extra money um, to extra spending money. That's what you thought it was for, but you wanted um, to pay the mortgage and you can do so much more with Pampered Chef. So let them know, hey, I'm working on becoming a director if that's your goal with our company. And I'm looking for people who want to be consultants, but I'm also looking for leaders who might want to do this along with me. So watch what I do tonight and see if it's something that you'd like to try. And I'd love to talk with you more about it. Um, if you do cooking shows, um, you can also at your cooking shows, let them know there's two ways to do Pampered Chef. You can do it tonight like I am where I go and I cook, or you can do it all from your computer in your pajamas as a virtual consultant. So let them know that there's two different aprons that they can choose. Um, recruiting activities. There are lots of different recruiting activities out there. Um, some that you can try are the ticket game. Like I said, I set a timer. Um, you can do four to five minutes. I typically do about three minutes at my cooking shows and I let them know they're gonna get a ticket for each question that they ask about my job and they can be as nosy as they want and I will do a small drawing at the small price at the end um, for something like a citrus peeler or a season's best cookbook, it doesn't have to be much. Um, and pass the prize works in the same way. I've done that before too, but instead of tickets, you hand the prize to one person, they pers pass it to the next person who asked the question. And then if things are going slowly, you might stand by the nearest person and um, kind of whisper in their ear, oh, you wanna know how much money I make? And then the answer is blank and hand them the prize to pass. If there's crickets, I always, you know, say, oh my gosh. So Shelly, I know you're just dying to know how much those kits cost. So why don't you turn to the back of your catalog and let's look at that. And I hand her a ticket or however. Um, another great one is the envelope game. That involves handing an envelope to three different people with numbers one through three on the outside. Ask the person with the envelope number one to open it and tell how much commission is in it. 
is it the check for? She'll say $432 and you'll say, this was Sally on my team, a new consultant who just earned it and did one virtual party per week. This is our first commission check. Then envelope two will have a higher amount, say $1,235. And you'll say that Samantha's, and she's been with our team for six months and does about two shows per week. And here's her commission check. And then envelope three will have more like $3,000 and say something like, this is my commission check, or your director, this is my director's commission check. Um, and they did eight shows last month, and they have 25 pe people on their team. Which commission check would you like to have? And this is always gets people um, excited when I do this game, because they're seeing, um, you know, the small check, for a couple hundred dollars. And I always ask them too, when I do this game, I say, so Shelly, that check was for um, $432. What could $432 do for your family right now? And then they, oh, well, it could, you know, pay our car payment. We just bought a new car. Oh, how would that feel that you could do that? Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. Right. And then the next one, you know, what would, hey, so um, Carol, what would 1250 do for your family right now? What would you use it for? And then they say it. And then the 3000 or I have um, my director's check, which is $15,000. You know, what would $15,000 a month do for you? I know it'd do a heck of a lot for my family. It would change our entire lives. Um, and most people at my shows, it would change our lives. So um, you hear a copy of uh, Stacy's check. Yeah, I have it somewhere. I have her old one. I think I have one that has 12,000. I don't have her new one, but I can get it. Um, 12, so, would work. <laughs> I mean, 12,000, 12,000 a month would change my life too. So, <laughs> um, so did you know that cards are either index cards or stickers? Um, there's cards that are index cards or stickers that are placed on random catalogs towards the end of the show, ask who has an index card or sticker and have them read. Did you know the statement? Like, did you know the pamper chef consultants can earn free products every season? Or did you know consultants get discounts from places like AT&T, Verizon, Sam's Club, and lots more? So I put those on the back of my catalogs and on the little Avery labels. And um, when there's crickets in the ticket game, I say, hey, Shelly, turn over your catalog. Can, what, what's the question on there? And then I have her read that question. Um, and why bag is a lot of fun too. Take a gift bag and place small items in the bag that represents your reasons for becoming a Pampered Chef consultant, like a small product, um, Monopoly money, a toy car for a car payment, a flip flop for trips you've earned, a large bra for the amount of support that we get from our company. That cracks me up. Um, a rubber band for the flexibility that it provides. Um, and Halloween witch, because I never want to work for one of these again. Um, <laughs> you'll get some laughs, but you'll really get your point across. Um, and that was the Y bag when I started, that was really popular. That Stacy did that at my cooking show and it like kind of stuck, you know, see the, the rubber band with the flexibility and the different things, picture of your family. This has done this for my family. Um, so that Y bag, um, really is impactful. And the PC recruiting slide, which is on the back of the booking slide, each page of it tells a perk of being a consultant. It's really effective, and I encourage you guys to try it. You can order it on the supply order um, list on Consultants Corner or as part of the consultant cart order. And I always, when, I, when I've used that in the past, I always say, okay, guys, I make it like a big um, like drum roll thing when I go over the booking um, benefits. And then I say, okay, guys, this is even better on this side. We're going to do the benefits of making consultants. So you guys got to ooh and ah, or I'm going to make you do it again. And so I like go, ta-da, and I, you know, drop it out. And then if they're like, oh, I'm like, oh, my gosh, guys, I was so weak. Let's do that again. And then it kind of gets them engaged, gets their intention. And then I just kind of go over um, just the benefits of being a Pampered Chef consultant. Wow. Great. So um, sharing the Pampered Chef opportunity um, on virtual parties, because that's where um, some of us are at right now. Um, Renee, are you virtual or cooking or both? I'm virtual. Virtual, okay. 
So I'm virtual now too, mostly. Um, so sharing the Pamper Chef opportunity at virtual parties involves doing posts that will create interest among your guests who are participating in the party. You might do a game like ask the person's commission check and ask how many shows they think this person did. Anyone who likes or comments on any of your recruiting posts is a potential lead. So you should reach out to them by private message, text, or call, or email. Usually a personal message works best. Um, if you have their text information from an order, I text them. I'm not shy. I'll just text them and say, oh my gosh, it was so great of your question. You know, I loved your question. And then open up dialogue from there. Um, Share the perks of being a consultant, just like you would at a cooking show. I like to complete my virtual parties with a Google survey that I told you guys about, um, where I can ask them the same kind of questions that are on the survey slips we use at a cooking show. But they might say they want more info privately, so I give them this opportunity. It's a great idea to do a full service checkout calls with your guests after orders are placed and before the show closes. If possible, and besides verifying their order and shipping address, you'll want to offer the opportunity to find out more about becoming a consultant as well as booking a show. And if you're on direct ship now, which I am, um, you'll want to reach out to them after their orders are placed and do the same thing. It's also a great business practice to send a thank you email to each ordering guest um, with a recipe and offer information about booking and joining your team. And the most important person to follow up with is your host. He or she is your best potential recruit. So ask the host before the show starts, maybe turn it into their first show during the show and then before you close it and tell them about the kit credit and see if they want to give it a try. Um, they are your best, best lead. And some great posts from the Pampered Chef um, website. These next few slides are graphics for marketing and imagery under the training tab on Consultants Corner, and they are under the social media and um, booking and recruiting. So um, this is a great one why I love being a Pampered Chef consultant. Shauna C, do you just oh. post that or do you, I'm trying to find ways to get more interaction rather than just post them. So I post, I post, but I always pose a question. Um, so I can show one of my slides after I show these slides and kind of show you at a party what I do. Um, I usually do some kind of um, like either a little tidbit story about, you know, what, what would uh, extra cash do for you? Or there's only eight paydays left until Christmas with Pampered mm -hmm. Chef. Right, would yeah. you like to have a debt free Christmas? Um, I have not used the dig into the perks one. Life tastes great. Grab a spoon. I've used that one. Um, a year from today, where you wished you've started today. I haven't seen that one. I really like that one. I haven't seen that one either. Um, ask me anything. I'd love to answer questions about you have about Pamper Chef. Um, oh, I like that one. Isn't that nice? I like yeah. that one too. Um, the thing is, is, I started looking at the party packs and they have a recruiting folder. And so the quick fix one and the weekday dinners one those they're identical the yeah the three a lot of them are but identical some of, some of these ones i mean i'd love to get those but i'm not i'm not finding them is there a different spot um it should i think there's a separate one under recruiting i think there is not party pack specific yeah i think there's um like this one i use this one there's room for you at our table that's adorable um, i love oh, that one too and i say something like um <laughs> You know, most memories are made around the table, and that's part of my job, um, sharing, you know, helping you create memories around the table. Right. Um, what, and then I will even say, what, what is one of your best memories um, at your family table, either growing up or with your um, current family, and then have them post those. Um, and then the apron comes in six different sizes. That's always a fun one. Um, and then five sizes, this one's really cute, um, short-term, hobby, part-time. And there are a lot of people who sign up as a part-time or a short-time and they become career. I signed up just to pay for tuition for preschool and that was seven and a half years ago. And um, now I'm paying for private school. So um, I didn't, I never intended to stay. When to invite um, at full service checkout during the 24 hour follow-up call, 
um, with the host within 24 hours to call to confirm the date and um, the 24 hours for guests to call the thank you. Um, so if you did a, um, if you did a full service checkout like that or in an activity like the ticket game, you might ask, what about the, what about the opportunity interested you the most? Or you were so much fun at the show, um, Renee, and you already totally love our products. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? If they say yes, ask them if they have any more questions or if they're ready to order the new consultant kit. I always ask them, so on a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? And they'll say, you know, oh, I'm a seven or I'm a five or whatever. What, what's holding you back from a 10? And then, you know, oh, I'm just not sure how I would work this out or what, whatever is holding them back. Then I, I go from there. I, how can I address that? How can I um, address that question to make them a 10? That's, so, that's a great way to get them involved in a conversation and finding out where they, how they're really feeling about joining. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, it's an honest answer. If they're a, if they're a two, I don't want to stay here and talk to them, you know, tell my eyes turn blue because they're not going to join. They're a two right now. Right. But if they're a, a six, seven, eight, I want to get them to a 10 because they're really thinking about this. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if they, you can sign them up at the show too. So you can sign them up right there. If you're at a cooking show, you can sign them up, take the virtual or not the virtual agreement, the um, agreement. You can just pull up your laptop, sign them up right there. Um, and if it's in a virtual party, you can give them your link and sign them up and you can be starting their launch show, you know, a couple days later, really, you could do it the next day, but plan it within four days. You can get their launch parties up and going. Are you um, setting up uh, virtual parties for your consultants? Oh, yes, I am. So that's been taking, um, I have a lot of new consultants on my team right now. So that's uh, been taking a lot of my time. I'm doing a post my party. Um, and I did a quick fix template. And so I have quick fix party started for them. Yeah. Yeah. The um, quick fix template is, is pretty fabulous. Um, I love that one. So we're, um, yeah, I set up a party for them. I run it. I have them active in the party, obviously. I send them the host posts because they are hosting it. So they do all the, um, I do my host coaching with them. I'm the one specifically running the party, but I make them be, they have to be interactive because it's their party, just like a host. Um, and if they have more questions, try to set up an appointment to answer those the next day, if you can, or maybe um, on the phone, if that's all that will work. So move quickly before, somebody else talks them out of it. If they say no, you can ask, is that, and this is key, is that no now or is that no, not ever? Because if it's not, if it's no now, you can ask, when can I follow up with you? Um, they'll usually, you know, usually they'll say, oh no, just not right now, I'm too busy. I have this, that, and the other going on. Depending on their response, you can ask when you follow up. Um, ask if they wanna be invited to your Facebook group to, um, for those, of them thinking about getting started, or if you have a um, discover the opportunity um, group going on, you can, you know, invite them to that. Well, I run these twice a month and I'd love to invite you to one and you can kind of see, we do a drawing and you can see some um, different consultants and some posts and learn a little bit more information. Can I add you to one of those? Um, so you're, you're getting the permission from them. And if not, then say, well, if, you know, circumstances ever change where, or if you know somebody that could use some extra money or might enjoy um, doing this, please think of me. You can also ask those who are interested in the opportunity if they would just like to host a show. This gives you another touch point to work with them again, and they may just change their mind. Um, I can't tell you how many people on my team said no, and they ended up hosting a show and then signing. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Another time you can invite um, future hosts is when you make your 24 hour call to confirm their party. The verbiage is on the next slide. Um, and um, for guests, you can call or email the day after the party to thank them for their order. We call, um, it's sometimes they're called Big Mac calls um, for the morning after call. I, we call them two by two calls, two weeks, two days, two weeks, and two months. 
Um, so that's what my team calls them. Um, so on this call, you know, hey, Julie, this is uh, April with Pampered Chef. I just want to give you a quick call. Say thank you for booking a party with me. I know we're going to have so much fun um, on, you know, September 10th at six o'clock. Um, I want to talk to you about how we're going to invite people and make this the most successful party for you. I know I've mentioned this yesterday, but I have to say that you've been on my mind and I think you'd be an awesome consultant with Pamper Chef and it would be terrific to have you as part of my team. I'd love to get together for a cup of coffee and tell you a little bit more about the opportunity. I would know um, you will, you'll love what you hear. What do you think? Because it never hurts to ask. The worst they can say is no. Mm -hmm. But what if they say yes? Right. Um, your morning after call to guests. Hey, Sally, this is um, Shaughnessy with Pampered Chef. I wanted to give you a quick call, say thanks for attending Julie's party last night. Did you have fun? Awesome. I know I mentioned this yesterday, and I just have to say that you have been on my mind. I think you would be an awesome consultant with Pampered Chef, and it would be terrific to have you as part of my team, and I'd love to work with you. Um, I'd love to get together for a cup of coffee and tell you a little bit more about the business opportunity. I know that you're going to love what you hear. What do you think? When's a good time? Um, and then guest call responses. If they say yes, set up a time to meet. If they say no, offer to do a show for them. No worries. Thanks so much. I appreciate you letting me, you know, ask you. Um, I'd still love to work with you. How about hosting a show and getting 60% off the quick cooker this month? I could set up a Facebook show. Um, I have an opening next week on September 26th. Does that work for you? Um, at your shows, you never um, think about the opportunity to invite everyone because you never know who's at your shows. Just by looking at people, you can't, can you tell if they're afraid the lights might turn be, be turned off tomorrow? Or maybe they had a huge fight with their boss that day and needed to find a change quickly. You can't tell by looking, so you have to ask everyone. And I love this graphic. I use it um, in a lot of my virtual um, parties and my virtual opportunity events. So you don't know who dropped off their kid at daycare and was crying on the way home or um, somebody who is worried about paying their school tuition the next month or for college or um, who needs money right now for a short term. You never know. And one of the best, um, the best stories I heard was uh, Julie Aldridge at National Conference. She did a recruiting from the heart and I believe the audio is on um, Consultants Corner. And she talked about her, she shared her story when she was in direct sales years ago and she was living in a trailer. They had um, her kids, she couldn't eat, they were so broke, she couldn't even afford to buy her kids the cereal they wanted at the grocery store. And she got invited to a party um, at, that was from some ladies from church and they were, a lot of them were doctor's wives. And she saved for weeks to go to that party. She saved $10 so that she could order something. And at the party, um, no, and nobody knew she lived in a trailer. Nobody knew her financial situation at the party, all of her friends. And the lady, um, the consultant talked about what um, the business opportunity and the, the potential income and even asked Julie at the check, uh, checkout um, and said, you know, I'd love to work with you. Um, you know, have you ever thought about doing something like this? And Julie was embarrassed. So she said, oh, I could never do what you do. And mm -hmm. she handed her some information and said, we'll take this home. And if you um, change your mind, read it over. And I'm going to call you tomorrow mm -hmm. and just follow up and see what you thought. And um, Julie said she got in her car. And before she even backed out of the driveway, she had read the entire packet and she knew she wanted to do this and she could do this. And the lady called the next day. So she followed up. She was, Julie was not going to call the lady, but the consultant called her back and Julie signed. And she said within a year, she was making a six figure income with that company. Wow. So you never know. That just really hit me. You never know what people's situations are. Um, and then ask everyone. Um, you never, you just never know. So 
don't forget um, about the goal to be an executive team by the end of the year. Is that what your team goal is right now, Shelly? Oh gosh, senior director, <laughs> senior director by the end of the year. So, and that's, that's our team goal right now is to yes. become a senior director by uh, the end of 2017. Senior director team, 18, awesome. 18, 2018, sorry, I'm off on my years. Um, so this week's call to action, practice recruiting messages and activities that you'll do at shows. Practice them in the mirror, practice them with your spouse, your daughter, your kids, somebody that you can just practice on. The more you practice, the easier it gets. You might be picking your nails the first couple, but you will get it down. It gets easier the more you do it, I promise. Um, observe a strong recruiter show. Ask somebody that you know that's a strong recruiter to be added to their show if it's on Facebook or to tag along in a show with them and see what they do and copy it, quite frankly. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody is achieving the results that you want, do the things that they're doing and you will get there. Um, offer the opportunity to everybody at Full Service Checkout and do it the 24 hour follow up call, make 15 contacts a week outside of your parties, um, have a power hour for booking and recruiting, um, and then listen to the top recruiters, tell it all, and a copy and Genevieve Black on Consultants Corner. And keep your eye on the goal. Um, have, your, have your goal um, on, written on your mirror. If your goal is to recruit one team member this month, to have your first team member, write it with a dry erase marker on your mirror in your bathroom so that you see it every morning when you get up and do those positive affirmations. I will recruit one person this month or I will recruit five people this month. Um, put it on your phone as a reminder to, to send you reminders every day. I will recruit five people this month or one person this month. Um, put it wherever you'll see on the refrigerator whatever your goals are put them in front of you i have i'm at my desk right now and i have my um my goal board that we made for um a program that i was in and it's like right in front of me so when i look up at my desk on my wall i see my goals what my goals are for this year with camper jeff so they're always in front of my face so any awesome. questions such great, great tips, Shaughnessy. I've heard that one about setting your um, setting your phone to send it, send you your not not necessarily your goal, but your affirmations. Mm -hmm. like, I am a recruiting and booking magnet, or I recruit five people. It's present tense, mm -hmm. not past tense or not future tense. You know, um, and you know, there's technology there that can do that. You know, put it as your screensaver. Uh, you know, the dry erase markers on your mirror. That's brilliant. This is brilliant. I have my phone. Siri calls me executive director. Yes. I'm not an executive director oh. yet, but she calls me executive director because the more times I hear it, I'm going to make it. Yeah. So um, it's just that positive affirmation. Um, <clears throat> that's like my big goal. Um, so small goal, not small goal, but next goal is senior and then executive after that. So just set your goals and, you never know. Set your goals high because if you fail at your high goal, you're going to achieve something and you're going to be farther than where you are. So maybe it's, maybe it's not director. Maybe it's earning a trip. If you want to earn Hawaii, set your sights on Hawaii because if you go for Hawaii, you're going to earn Scottsdale because you're working on earning Hawaii and that's your goal. Um, so focus on your goals and you will make it. I just did it. Oh, did you set a reminder? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Shaughnessy. <laughs> You're welcome. So, yes, it's and it's all about consistency. Being consistent in your contacts, in your um, in your recruiting, in your business, and setting time for your business, touching your business every day. Um, and I've had times where life happens to me too. I'm currently in a situation where life is happening, but I have to make an effort every day to at least do something on my business. I might have stuff piling up, but every day I'm doing something right. because I know what my goal is. And if right. I don't do it, I'm not going to reach my goals. Well, I know we're just about to wrap up. Renee, what were your best, oh my gosh, takeaways from, from our time together? 
Oh, holy cow. I've got a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved it when Shaughnessy said, take us out for a couple of dates. You don't have to marry us. That was on my I list. I loved that. <laughs> I really did. That, because that's pretty much telling them, give it a test drive, you know? Yep. Because people think, oh man, if I sign up, then I have to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. Exactly. I'd like you to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. The uh, quick fix template mm -hmm. that that really interested me. Um, I might have to find out more about that, Shelley. <laughs> um, and then your your little things to get them interacting at parties, like the mm -hmm. Y bag and the Did You Know cards. That's that's pretty cool. I didn't know about the Y bag or the cards. The envelope game I've seen. Um, and then your question on a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good at feeling somebody out. It is. And that's in our virtual opportunity event that we run. That's one of the things on it. That's one of the posts. If what, you know, where are you right now on a mm -hmm. scale of one to 10? It's at the very end of the, the slides. Right. And then you know what, you know, where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. We don't ask. Right. Mm -hmm. we You're don't scared ask. to ask. You don't ask. Know, like, oh my gosh, know. are they really interested or could they yeah. care less? And but we need, to, right. we need to know because you don't want to waste your time or theirs really. That's, that's the biggest thing is you don't want to waste your time. Right. Or theirs, but yeah, I, I don't have time to waste. So it's, that's a big thing. The, um, did you guys want to see the post that I do for the business opportunity? Yes, please. That'd be okay. good. I'm going, I'm trying to find that real quick and put that on the, um, where's it at? Come on, it's on the show. And I found, um, while you're looking for that, just kind of on that same topic, I um, found that the way that I've been saving pictures that I find that I want to reuse is almost like making a copy of them and it loses quality each time rather than downloading them from their source rather than. Oh, yeah. Them. So I'm kind of trying to be cognizant of that, but it's taking a lot longer time. And um, so finding the sources for those, those were clearly pampered chef produced pictures, but, um, but I'm, I don't remember where I don't, nowhere else to see it. Maybe there's, um, is the, you know, the recruiting page, the recruiting kind of landing page. What do they call it, Shaughnessy? Um, just a minute, guys. The There's a recruiting, um, what do they call share. it? Oh, it says sharing is paused. Bring your shared window to the front. Oops. Okay, where? Where is it? Okay. Yes, yeah, so as you've started sharing the screen and then double, okay. Okay, can you see it now? Go. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of the posts. This is a party I did a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it a bonus prize post. Um, fast, fresh. This was a fast and fresh weeknight meals. Um, taste so great. Freedom, flexibility are the main ingredients. Grab a spoon. Um, join our team. Everyone who asks at least one question below will about being a Pampered Chef consultant will earn an entry um, for a tasty prize. Um, so I give a separate prize away for this than the grand prize drawing. You can also just, you know, make it 10 tickets or something for the grand prize drawing if you want to do that. Okay. Um, and then your question needs to be about being a consultant, not about hosting or a specific product. Ready, set, go. This party's closed, right? Can I add Renee? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Renee, I just added you to that party. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Uh-huh. And yeah, so... And I find that easier to just look through an actual party. And so I usually I'll have one open. I'll have a Facebook window open and another Facebook or sync share window open so that I can move thing, copy and paste and move things back and forth. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's smart. I don't even do that. No, that's a great tip. Ooh, good. Um, so yeah, I just do a little ask me anything. And then I do the same thing. Um, I think it was up here on a, 
booking one with a bonus prize post um, for if you could pick anything from the catalog for 60% off, what would you choose? Because that's what this current um, host special is. Right. Okay. And or then what, it, what prizes are you giving away? So um, because I'm in direct ship, I have to mail everything. So I give away either an old season's best cookbook because I buy them off the um, supply order or on the outlet, I'll go through and I'll buy, they, they have had, I don't know if they're currently there. Um, they're like a barbecue recipe cards. Like it's a little book oh, yeah. for like a dollar or $2 or something. And then I think they have one like plant-based meals. It was a dollar something, anything that's, that's small, cheap and flat that I can mail. And it costs me, I, I think like a dollar something. So. so you're doing, you're, you're physically mailing them. And for a while there I was doing, I was using the, that exclusive content and they're the PDF, the recipe books mm -hmm. and, you know, sending the messaging them, the collection of snack bar recipes or the recipe book for the, I mean, as a prize as their prizes. Oh, okay as their prizes guys are what are you doing are you stocking in stamps and supplies to mail things or are you going to the post office all the time no i don't go to the post office all the time i only go like once a week maybe yeah. um that's the max that i go so but i'll are do are you saving all those and and take yeah them? so what i do is i keep um i have I, I just started getting more organized with this but i basically have a you know a note on my desk and anybody who earns a prize or their tickets just a minute guys um i keep track of it and i'll say okay shelly um recruiting prize and then you know put your information and so then one day i'll go in and i'm like okay so now i'm putting you know all the prizes together i usually try to i have my kids stuff the envelopes with those recipe books and stick them in there and then I just write there, you know, whoever I'm mailing them to. And then I load it all up and take it in to the post office. I have done stamps.com in the past. Um, and then we, for a while, when we were living in our RV, the post office was literally right across the street. So it was just well, easier to sense, yeah. What do you think about that? The PDF, you know, which ones I'm talking about, right? The little I do. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a good idea. I, I would like to use that for something. Um, but I, I think know. people, Price, for look. me, I think people are more. It's, it's like they do say it's the moment. Tangible. Yeah. Well, okay. So oh. tangible, but it's the moment, not necessarily the momento. So if you make a great big fuss and a great big deal about them yeah. on their, in front of their friends, like in the page. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I'm not mailing big expensive prizes. That's the thing. Like, they, yeah, I'm all excited about this prize, but it's like mm -hmm. a 50 cent cookbook. Right, so. right. Right. But stocking it in and have and tracking down the address mm -hmm. and getting it to the post, right. Or into the yeah. mail or whatever. It's, stocking it's, one, it. it's definitely one more thing. And that, that is, that is my only difficulty with direct ship or my only thing that I don't like about it necessarily right. but i did just sign up to do the next version of direct ship so um i like it enough the the benefits far outweigh the yeah yeah oh no it certainly does but i, I um, never have a host credit card declined or anything like that so i love that or not just a host i'm sorry a, a guest because they're all they're doing it themselves right well it's a super big ben benefit i've got shows that are scheduled for the end of october that are already collecting and submitting sales, like hundreds of dollars in sales that people have their products and the parties are just growing. Yep. So there's, there's huge, huge benefits there. Yeah. And I think people really like getting their products. They'll, they'll post in the show. Oh my gosh, the show's still going. And I just got my order yesterday. Yeah. Well, gal yeah. attended gal who attended my party yesterday and she was a virtual party whose orders really just barely got up to 200. It qualified. But we, I kept mentioning, like, we'll have me over and we'll make this recipe, blah, 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 blah. And, and um, we had it set and it postponed. It postponed twice. And she held it yesterday. And she turned a $230 party into a $680 party. One gal who had already ordered a rock crock and had it sitting at home placed another $100 order, booked a virtual party to start Monday, and is co-hosting. She's that co-host. 
She's oh, okay. hosting a virtual party on Monday, and they are hosting at the end of October. I'm having surgery, so I wow. want to back stuff up. So That's she's awesome. got two orders in with two shipping charges. She was thrilled. That's awesome. She was thrilled, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, there's logistic. You know, we think that they won't do that, but they they do. They will. They, they do. Yeah, they you have will. to offer it and assume and and the host change. We were going to do the chicken and art, uh, chicken and asparagus and the skillet, and I'm like, oh, I want to show you the quick cooker so bad. The host messaged me the day before and said, can we do the lettuce wraps and the quick cooker instead? Score, because that's all I'm doing this month. All my parties, that's wow. all I'm doing. So that makes it again, you know, simplifies things. If you're just doing the same show over and over again, you don't have to stress over what to pack and, and how to do it because you're just you're on autopilot that part's on I autopilot. always do the same show I only offer one or possibly two but I always do the same show I don't do a bunch of shows there you go same one there you go. well now quick cooker absolutely yeah yeah I'm well, so sorry I gotta get going ladies you gotta go yeah no problem um thank you thank, thank you, you so much, much. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Did a great great job. You. I'm going to end great. the recording next week, Monday. Mark your calendar. And uh, for those of you watching on the recording, give it up for Shaughnessy. She did great. Yay. Thank you, Renee. We'll talk to you shortly, okay? Okay.